Okay, backstory. I only read this during this time. I'm not going to read it during subsequent tries. Rumours. Only a foolhardy adventurer would embark on such a perilous quest without first finding out as much as possible about the mountain and its treasures. Before your arrival at the foot of Firetop Mountain, you spend several days with the townsfolk of a local village, some two days' journey before from the base. Being a likeable sort of person... I'm likeable, apparently. <laughs> oh, there we go. You find it easy to get on of the local peasants. How likeable can I be if I'm referring to them as peasants? Although they told many stories about the mysterious warlock's sanctuary, you cannot feel sure that all, or indeed any of these, were based on fact. The villagers have seen many adventurers pass on their way to the mountain, but few ever returned. The journey ahead was extremely dangerous, that you knew for, that you knew for certain. Of those who returned to the village, none contemplated going back to Firetop Mountain. It's called Firetop Mountain. That doesn't seem like a place I'd want to return to if I didn't have to. There seems to be some truth in the rumour that the warlock's treasure was stored in a magnificent chest with two locks, and the keys to these locks were guarded by various creatures within the dungeons. That means someone must have at least seen the chest. I mean... I and mean, I guess someone made it all the way up there but didn't have the keys. The warlock himself was a sorcerer of great power. Some described him as old, others as young. Some said his power came from an enchanted deck of cards, others the silky black gloves he wore. He looks kind of young on the cover here. I'm, I'm guessing that's him. I, guess, I don't think the dragon's him, but... I hope that's not a spoiler. <laughs> um... The entrance to the mountain was guarded by a pack of warty-faced goblins, stupid creatures fond of their food and drink. Towards their inner chambers, the creatures became more fearsome. You reach the inner chambers, you would cried to cross a river. The ferry service was regular, but the ferryman enjoyed a good barter, so you should save a gold piece for the trip. The locals also encourage you to keep a good map of your wanderings, for without a map you would end up hopelessly lost within the mountain. That's what I'm counting on. <laughs> Then it finally came your day of leaving. The whole village turned out to wish you a safe journey. Tears came from the eyes of many women, young and old alike. You couldn't help wonder whether there were tears of sorrow said by eyes which would never see you alive again. Now turn over. <laughs> Not now begin your adventure. Now turn over, it says. All right. <clears throat> At last, your two-day hike is over. You unsheath your sword, lay it on the ground and sigh with relief as you lower yourself onto the mossy rocks to sit for a moment's rest. You stretch, rub your eyes, and finally look up at Firetop Mountain. The mountain itself looks very menacing. It's called Firetop, of course it's menacing. It's a volcano, probably. The steep face in front of you looks to have been savaged by the claws of some gargantuan beast. I've got a picture to accompany that. That doesn't look very savage, if you ask me. But uh, I'll accept that. Sharp rocky crags jut out at unnatural angles, and the top of the mountain you see the eerie red colouring. Probably some strange vegetation, which had given the mountain its name. Okay, so it's not a volcano, it's just got red trees on it. Apparently Dr. Zeus lives here. Perhaps no one will ever know exactly what grows up there, as climbing the peak must surely be impossible. Your quest lies ahead of you. Across the clearing is a dark ca cave entrance. You pick up your sword and get to your feet and consider what dangers may lie ahead of you. But with determination, you thrust the sword home into its scabbard and approach the cave. You peer into the gloom to see the dark, slimy walls of pools of water in the stone floor in front of you. The air is cold and dank. You light your lantern and step warily into the blackness. Cobwebs brush against your face and you hear the scurrying of tiny feet. Rats, most likely. You set off into the cave. After a few yards, you arrive at a junction. Will you turn west or east? Okay, so this is my first de decision, and I'm guessing probably even this early on, I can probably screw myself over if I pick the wrong one. So, uh, west or east? Um, well, let's see. From where I live, west would be America, east would be Japan, and I like Japan, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go east. Turn to two seventy-eight. Two, two, seven, eight. Here we are. The passageway soon comes to an end at a locked wooden door. You listen at the door but hear nothing. Would you try to charge the door down? If so, turn to one first six. If you would rather turn round and go back to the junction, turn to ninety-two. 
Well, if I just go back to the junction, um, that's kind of wasting my time. I already made the decision to come this way, so I'm going to try and charge the door down. I'm probably going to injure myself and cause something stupid, but no, oh well, I've got health to spare, so <clears throat> yeah, I, I can risk being a bit foolish at this point. So let's go for it. Uh, one five six. You charge the door with your shoulder. Roll two dice. If the number rolled is less than or equal to your skill score, you succeed. Turn to three, four, three. If the number rolled is greater than your skill, you rub your bruised shoulder and decide against trying again. Okay, my skill is quite low, so I might not actually break this door down here. Let's have a look. Six! I broke the door down! Nice! So, turn to three, four, three. I was expecting just to bounce harmlessly off the door again, or something. Yeah, I am the great adventurer. Oh no, I've been defeated by a door. The door bursts open and you fall headlong into a room. Your heart jumps as you realise you are not landing on the floor, but plunging down a pit of some kind. Luckily, the pit is not particularly deep. You lose a, you land in a heap less than two metres down. Lose one stamina point for your bruises, climb out of the pit into the, ro into the room and leave through the door heading westwards. I went through all that. <laughs> all I did was get hurt. <laughs> Okay, make a hint to go west next time, because I've just lost my first bit of health. Uh, that is not a good start. <laughs> okay, so we're heading west. Um, there's 92. Uh, damn it, book, you've tricked me already. You arrive back at the junction in the passage. You look left to see the cave entrance in the dim distance, but walk straight on. Turn to 71. Uh, this is not a very good beginning. Um, <clears throat> there is a right hand's turn to the north in the passage. Cautiously, you approach a sentry post on the corner and look in. You see a strange goblin-like creature in leather armour asleep at his post. Here we have a picture of him. I get a little picture, actually. You can try to tiptoe past him. Test your luck. If you're lucky, he does not wake and remains snoring loudly. If you're unlucky, you step with a crunch on some loose ground and his eyes flick open. Wait, I, I have to test my luck here. Or, uh, can't I just attack him or something? Let's uh, see. I can just get less than nine. I should be okay with that. Six. Okay, so I managed to sneak past him. And my luck is now eight. Okay, so he does not wake. So turn to 301. Where's 301? There we are. To your left, on the west face of the passage, there is a rough, cut wooden door. You listen at the door and hear a rasping sound, which may be some sort of creature snoring. Do you want to open the door? If so, turn to 82. If you wish to press on northwards, turn to 208. Well, I suppose the creature could be guarding something, so it probably would be a good idea to go after him. So I guess I'll try out 82. 82, 82... <coughs> Aha, here we go. The door opens to reveal a small smelly room. I've broken into the bathroom, haven't I? Someone's just been in here. In the centre of the room is a rickety wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Underneath the table is a small wooden box. Asleep on a straw mattress in the far corner of the room is a short, stocky creature with an ugly, warty face. The same sort of creature you found asleep at the sentry post. He must be the guard for the night's watch. You may either return to the corridor and press on northwards, or creep into the room and try to take the box without waking the creature. If you want to try and steal the box, test your luck. If you are lucky, he does not wake up. If you are unlucky, turn to 33. So again, I've got to test my luck, not my fighting skill. Um, I'm using a lot of luck early on in the book. But I guess the box could have something useful in it, so I'm going to try and steal it. I'm going to get less than eight, so let's have a look here. Four. So I am lucky, and he does not wake up. So I turn to one, four, seven. Yeah. Subtract that from my luck score again. My luck is now seven. Uh, where was I? 
Okay. You leave the room and open the box in the passage. In fi- inside, you find a single piece of gold and a small mouse, which must have been the creature's pet. You keep the coin and release the mouse, which scurries off down the passageway, gain two luck points, and turn to 208. Okay, so my luck's back up at nine again. And I have a gold coin. That's good, because they said I needed a gold coin to pay the ferryman. Okay, turn to 208. <coughs> Further up the passage, along the west wall, you see another door. You listen at it, but hear nothing. If you want to try opening the door, turn to 397. If you want to continue northwards, turn to 363. But again, at this point, I want to open doors and find out what's inside them. I don't really know what this book's up to yet, so I think it'd be best to open the door again. 397. Well, that's near the end of the book. <clears throat> the door opens to reveal a small room with a stone floor and dirty walls. There is a stale smell in the air. In the centre of the room is a makeshift wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Under the table is a small box. In the far corner of the room is a straw mattress. You may either open the box or leave the room. Well, I should probably open the box. There's no reason not to at this point. So I don't know if it's a trap or not. And if it is a trap, then I'll know not to open it later on if I tr- when I try again, so. I'm going to fall for as many traps as I can right now. The box is light, but something rattles within. You open the lid and a small snake darts out to bite your wrist. You must fight the snake. When they said a small snake, they meant it. That's not a fight. That's a... That's tiny. Alright, so this is my first attempt at combat, so I need to write this down. Because I am fighting the snake. It has five skill and two stamina. So a single hit is going to kill the snake. And so, so let's have a look here. Um, what was the rules of combat again? Was it one dice or two? I did it wrong. Two dice. Okay, so get my dice. The snake got ten, so his first skill is fifteen. I need a roll, decent roll. Five. So now I got bit by the snake. Not a good start. That takes my health down to 16. Try again. Snake gets 9, so he's on 14. Ah, there we go. I got 11. That means my skill is higher, and the snake is dead. So I got bit, but oh well. There you go, it's early days, and I'll know not to open the box next time. Unless the snake's going or something, in which case I will open the box next time. The box has fallen to the ground during your fight with the snake, and out of it has fallen a bronze-coloured key with the number 99 onto it. You may take the key with you... You may take the key with you, note it on your equipment list, and leave the room. Add one luck point. Uh, my luck's at maximum, so I can't add the luck point, but I can take the... Bronze key ninety nine. So that that was worth grabbing, I think, because the, the snake. Yeah, I need keys. Turn to three six three. Oop, too far. Three six three. Here we are. Further up the passage on the west wall, you see another similar door. You listen at the door and grimace to hear the worst singing of your life. Ha! <laughs> Do you want to go into the room and investigate the hideous din, or walk on up the passageway? How can I not go in? I want to see who this singer is. Hey. The door opens to reveal a small room. The room is dirty and unkempt. A straw mattress lies in one corner. In the centre of the room is a wooden table on which a candle burns, lighting the room with its flickering flame. A small box rests under the table. Seated around the table are two small, warty cre- creatures with warty skin, dressed in leather armour. Again, we've got a picture of them. I think these are the same goblins as before. Or, well, not the same two, but the same kind. They are drinking some sort of grog, and by the way they stagger to their feet on your arrival, you assume they are very drunk. You may either draw your sword and leap forward at them, or slam the door quickly and run up the passage. Well, again, I'm, I'm 
need to find out what they're guarding, so it's worth getting to the fights this early on, see if they're doing anything worth you getting. 116, alright. There we are. Ah, they're, they're orcs, not goblins. Okay, so we've got two things to fight here. First orc and second orc. Um, the two drunken orcs you now face are obviously startled at your entrance, and as, they qui as quickly as they are able, they fumble around for their weapons. You must attack each one in turn. Their drunkenness allows you to add one point to your dice roll when rolling to work out your attack strength. Cool. Okay, so their skill is 5 and 5. Their stamina is 4 and 5. Okay, so I guess I'll take out the first orc first. Okay, so he's got 9. So that gives him... 14. And I've got 6, which gives me 13. This low stamina score is already starting to bite me in the butt. And I oh yeah, the second one, I've got to figure him out as well. So he gets. Um, what's that going to be? 13. I get 17. So I got hurt by one orc and managed to hit the other. So that takes my health down to 14, and takes him down to 3. Let's do it again. First orc gets 14 again. I get 13 again. <laughs> uh, this orc's pissing me off. My health is now on 12. I need to drink my potion at the end of this. Second orc gets a 13 again. I get 11. I'm going to die in this room because of these damn orcs. I'm on 10 health. First orc gets... The first orc... <laughs> oh, I'm laughing too much. Gets a total score of 16. <laughs> I get a total score of 16, so we did nothing to each other. That's good. Second orc gets 13 again. I get 13. That round wasn't a whole lot of nothing. Alright, first orc gets 9. I can't get hurt by the first orc, that's good. And I managed to hit him. Because I got 13. I'm noticing a lot of 13s in this. I wonder if my dice are loaded. <laughs> Second orc gets 10. I get <coughs> 16. So one more hit on each orc, and I should win this. Assuming I don't suddenly get terrible luck. That's 14 versus my 14, so that's balanced. That's 10 versus my 10. <laughs> Another round of nothing. I hope all the fights don't go like this. That's his um twelve against my Aha. That's my fifteen. So that's one orc down. One orc is dead. I've only got to hit the other one once and I'm finished. So he gets fifteen versus my nine. These orcs are taking away so much health. <clears throat> he gets 13 versus my 11. I'm not going to die in a room because of two walks. I seriously hope not. This low skill score is screwing me over. He gets 10. There we go, I got 12. So I'm now down on about 6 health. Because two orcs wouldn't leave me the hell alone. I could have escaped during that battle, but you know, I want to find out what there is they're guarding. This is only the first attempt, as remember. 